Want to make a podcast? Spotify's got a platform that lets you make one super easily, then distribute it everywhere, and even earn money, all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters, and here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then, you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are also available on Spotify. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free with no catch. Ever since I discovered Spotify for Podcasters, I feel like I've been having a lot more connection with my listeners through the Q&As and polls. I highly recommend you give it a try. Download the Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com forward slash podcasters to get started. Hi, I'm Father Daniel DePlantis, a Catholic priest, martial artist, and host of the Karate Priest Podcast. Have you ever wondered what the Church teaches about different topics? Are you a martial arts enthusiast or just someone who wants to learn more about martial arts? I'd like to invite you to join me and many guests on my podcast as we cover topics of faith, everyday living, and martial arts on the Karate Priest Podcast. guys, welcome back to season three of A Catholic's Perspective, the podcast about being a young Catholic surviving in a secular world. Today I have with me my producer Todd. Welcome back, Todd. Hi, Amber. Good to be back. Yes, fun time. So today is going to be a Q&A episode. Todd's got some good juicy questions for me. I don't like using the word juicy, but I just did, so it's fine. All right. <laughs> <laughs> So what do we got? I hate when people say delicious. I've got some delicious <laughs> questions. I'm like, oh, really? Yeah, okay. Would you prefer juicy? Would we say juicy better? Is that I think better? I'd rather say juicy than, than <laughs> delicious. <laughs> if you could eat the questions, would they be delicious or juicy? That's the real question. I've got a ton of questions. You sent me like 15 pages of questions. So I'm it's been saying, a while. People are curious. People, it's been a while since, um, since we did a Q&A because obviously we had the summer off. So yeah. lots of questions have been built up. So we're not going to get to all of these today. But, but we're going to uh, try. <laughs> but we're, well, we'll see how long it goes. I don't want to be giving, I don't want to do Q&A for two hours. We can just skip all the, are you single questions? We can just skip all We'll of skip those. all of those. But yeah. there will be, there's, it looks like there's some fun personal questions. So I will I'm put excited. some of those in there, but mm. yeah, some, some yeah. of them, all the marriage proposals, that's several pages. Yeah, those were, those were a lot this time around. That was, that was fun. <laughs> Let's jump right in. Okay. First question is, where are you? <laughs> <laughs> um well in my room in my loft so I'm from originally I'm from Chicago Illinois and uh I go to Kansas a lot and I just kind of putts around there I don't I don't know <laughs> um good enough for me there you go. <laughs> is, is your knee okay so I okay when this podcast com, this podcast comes out it'll probably be healed by now but I banged my knee really hard on my friend's table yesterday like she has a glass table it was a thick table and I banged it on the corner so it's like all swollen it's great wow I know <laughs> I'm accident prone dislocated both kneecaps and now I just hit my knee on the side of the table I thought your kneecaps were totally gone at this point I mean, technically humans don't need kneecaps. Like that was, they say that we might, you know, go out, you know, like how people say like, we'll have webbed feet by like 2050 or whatever. Well, people think that kneecaps aren't necessary too. Well, if there's anyone out there that's a doctor that can verify whether we need kneecaps or not, please write into the show. <laughs> Let us know. <laughs> I'm curious myself. Me too. Um, Let's see. The next question is, do you think God will get upset if I don't follow my vocation? Mm, I think it's an interesting question because usually your vocation is something that you're called to do. So if you don't feel called to do something, it's probably not your vocation. Uh, for example, I stayed with some Dominican sisters almost two years ago in October, or maybe it was last year. I think it was actually last year in October. 
And while I was there, I really loved having the spiritual detox, you know, praying every day, getting up at six. Okay. I did not love getting up at 6 a.m., but I liked praying every day and going to daily mass and like being surrounded by other girls who were very um, Catholic and things like that. So that was really awesome. But the thing is, I felt like religious life was the impossible vocation for me. And one of the sisters there, she specifically told me she, she, because she also counseled us a little bit on the side. She was like, if you feel like this is the impossible vocation, it's probably not your vocation because to her, the, the impossible vocation to her was marriage. She thought who could ever do this? Like, this is so hard. And she saw it as the impossible vocation. And when she got into religious life, it just clicked, like it just worked for her. And so for a lot of us, I think it's really important to, you know, discern our vocation by staying with sisters or nuns or things like that. But then if you're not called to that date, you know, go on some dates. Remember that dating is not a commitment per se. You're not committed until you're married, right? Uh, um, You can have that closed relationship. Of course, I think that's the most important, like be unique to each other and not go on like multiple dates with multiple girls at once or multiple guys at once. That's kind of weird. Um, but definitely date. And if you don't feel like dating's your thing, maybe kind of go back and discern your vocation. It's really hard. And it depends on what area of life you're in right now too. You know, it just depends, but I don't think God would be upset. It's just, I just don't think it's your vocation if it's not something you love. Good. The next question is how to go to confession when you feel like you're annoying the priest with the same sin over and over. Go to a different priest. I mean, the difference is, is it the priest who's making you uncomfortable or is it your own like scrupulosity, you know, in a sense, is it you who thinks you're annoying the priest or is it the priest actually saying like, dude, you're really annoying because if you think you're annoying the priest, trust me, you're not okay. Priests here a million different sins. Okay. They, they never get discouraged from, um, giving somebody the sacrament of reconciliation. So if you feel like you're annoying the priest, just know that you're not, because that's the whole reason priests are there. That is literally their job is to spiritually guide their sheep. And so, um, The other thing I would say, if the priest is acting like you're annoying him or something, or he told you flat out, go to a different priest. You don't want that priest to be in charge of your spiritual direction. Um, Whether it's confession, you actually go to spiritual direction with him or whatever. And also, I do highly suggest you get a spiritual director that is a priest, or at least a confessor who's a priest. And you do this by going to a priest and you ask him like, hey, would you be interested in being my spiritual, you know, director or confessor? And then that way, Um, the priest can help you with those habitual sins. He can help you um, really understand why you fall into those sins and you kind of gain a friend through that, but also somebody who's able to lead you on the right path. And then that way you won't feel like you're annoying him because you're specifically going to him for these reasons. Right. Or you could try not sinning over and over the same thing. (laughs) (laughs) Todd coming in with the mallet, just like, stop it. You don't have to annoy the priest if you quit sinning. Come on. <laughs> the fly swatter. Yes. Just be like Jesus. <laughs> the next question is, I've strayed so far from God and I don't know what to do. I think, I think it can be hard. Like, what is the reason you stray? Because some of these questions can be very vague, right? Because some people will ask me a really loaded question, but I don't have any background information. I don't know the person or the person they're talking about. And so most of the time, those questions will go unanswered by me because I don't have enough context to give you an actual answer. I will say, though, in the same context of the other question I just answered is to find a spiritual director, somebody who can hold you accountable when you start falling away. Um, The other thing I would suggest is at what point did you start falling away from your faith? Was it because of a person, maybe a girlfriend or boyfriend who's not a part of the faith? Is it because of something big or tragic that happened in your life and you felt like God abandoned you? Um, It really depends on the context of it. But I always suggest the first place to go is obviously reconciliation, confession. Go to confession, do either a general confession 
where you confess all your sins if you've been away for a very long time, um, or if it hasn't been that long and you just feel distant from God, go to confession and start making um, rest. Was it restitutions? It's kind of like was that thing we do every year during um, New Year's Eve? What is that? What are those resolutions? Resolutions. Make a resolution <laughs> to go to adoration or daily mass or to do something small, like make a resolution to pray the rosary every day or the divine mercy chaplet or even just the morning offering in the morning. Um, those can make huge differences in your life. And just remember that Jesus loves you and he wants you to come back to him. There you go. Good. What is your favorite church? St. John Cantus. I am biased. I was raised there. I had my first communion there. I had my confirmation there. I am friends with a lot of the priests and brothers there. I am very biased that that is the most, the most prettiest, <laughs> the prettiest church I have ever been to in the United States. And that's including basilicas and chapels and other places I've been. It's the most beautiful. Good. Your take on being barefoot in a church, is it respectful or disrespectful? Mm, here's the thing. I've totally done this. <laughs> um, I, I don't, okay, people might get upset with me on this one. I don't necessarily think it's disrespectful, personally. I don't. And the reason that I say that is because of instances like Moses and the burning bush where he was told to remove his shoes. There have been a total, sorry, my cat's crying in the background. There's been a few, you know, like things in the Bible where people have removed their shoes when they stand on holy ground. Um, I will say though, I've done this a few times, not necessarily because I wanted to, but because the high heels I wore were too high and they started bugging my knees. So I just kind of like popped them off. Um, and people were like, wow, she's like five feet shorter. Uh, <laughs> so I don't necessarily think that it is disrespectful, but at the same time, because it could be a distraction to others. Um, I don't think it would be ideal either. I would suggest wearing maybe some flats or something if you're a woman and you don't like wearing high heels. Um, I wear sandals all the time because sandals make me feel like the closest to being barefoot. Um, but I don't think it's necessarily disrespectful, but I also think it can be distracting. Good. Do you like to eat sushi? Mm, no. No, I don't. It's nasty. I've eaten eel before, and eel is good, um, but I don't like sushi. Of course. Well, I like it, Brandon Pena, so. <laughs> Ew. Thanks for the question. Um, can you pray for my friend? He's a Muslim, but he's interested in converting to Christianity. Yeah, of course. Prayer requests are always, always on my docket. So what that one down. Um, can you talk about veiling at mass and how, how to convince your parents to veil? I think the hardest thing is you really cannot convince anybody of anything. So the first thing I really love to tell people is like, you are not responsible for anybody else's voca uh, vocation, um, sanctification, or choices. So you yourself can set the example and start veiling. But if your mom doesn't want to veil, you can't really force her to veil. You can't really force anybody to veil, but you can set the example because our, the real reason that well, as Christians, we're not meant to force people into Christianity. We're not forced. We're not meant to force people to, be, to, to believe what we believe. Um, instead, we plant that seed and we live the gospel out through our own lives so that we can hopefully inspire the other person to do it out of their own free will. Um, because that's more important than forcing somebody to do something they don't want to do. Because in reality, how many of us have stuck to a gym reg regiment when we said we were going to and then didn't because we hated it? I'm pointing at myself because it's me. Right. It's me. Yeah. Um, when will you be back on TikTok? I miss seeing your videos. Never. I was permanently banned. And uh, I'm honestly, I am not running to get back onto that really bad app, to be honest. <laughs> I it was not I liked being on there because of you guys but at the end of the day there was so much just degenerate stuff that went around on there that I just 
it didn't become enjoyable anymore, unfortunately. I like the cute animal videos, though. Those were cute. It's interesting that um, religious content generally gets taken down off TikTok, but pornographic content stays up. <laughs> Literally. like there <laughs> Very are odd reason, reasonings behind why things get banned. And, and, it could, and it could just be because, too, there's more complaints against religious content. Mm. You know, who knows why or how or the reasoning behind why things get taken down. But, uh, you know, the fact is a lot of, a lot of Christian creators have gotten taken down. Well, I think so. also because of the fact that these days, one of the common sayings you always hear is sex sells. And so you make a lot of money off of it, you know, and if it brings in money, why get rid of it? Whereas, you know, you don't probably get as much money from religion and Christianity and stuff. So you probably get more issues because you're, um, you're contradicting the secular world and what brings in people's money a lot of the times because it's, you know, it's, it's disgusting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of rotten people in the world too that get on social media and they, you know, they admire the pornography and complain about the spirituality. And yeah. Those are the people that complain. You because know, I just, feel like in a way they feel convicted, mm -hmm. you know, and they're just like, I feel conviction. So I'm going to get rid of this. We are moving toward more um, specific. Uh, religioushippie.com content. So I think mm -hmm. people in the future, rather than seeing other social media growth happen, it'll be more dedicated content um, at the dot com. So right, that's what which we, is why you guys forward. should follow my my website and sign up for my newsletter, so that you guys will be able to stay on top of things in case I get banned off Instagram or something. <laughs> you never know. Um, what do you say to people who ask who created God? I think it's tricky. It's a tricky one because in reality, like we really do need to have faith, right? And so God has always existed. And a lot of people have a hard time wrapping their minds around that because of the fact we are human and we don't have, you know, that knowledge that we will when we get to heaven. And some people might speculate, oh, well, God was created, but then if God was, if God, okay, if something created God, that would have to be God because, you know, you can't make something out of nothing. And so there would have to be a higher being, right? Which doesn't exist. So God existed for eternity. He's always existed outside of space and time. And then he created humans. And I know it can be tricky. It's a really hard theological question that I'm trying to figure out how to say it without being too theological about it so that you guys would understand it. Um, but Catholic Answers did have a great article on this that I think you guys should check out too. And I'll post it in this, the notes because otherwise I'd just read it word for word, but then that's plagiarism. <laughs> right? Well, not really plagiarism, but you know, I know yeah. what you mean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> reciting word for word um how do you help yourself from judging other people oh oh this is a fun one so it's really hard especially in today's society when we can look at somebody and be like well at least i'm not that bad or at least i don't do that um and I usually like to put myself in that person's shoes because at the end of the day I really don't know a lot about the person I'm judging um, because I notice something that I tend to judge strangers, my friends, like the ones that I'm truly close with, the ones who are like my best friends, I don't judge them because I know their character. I know their past. I've known what they've gone through and it makes sense to where they are today with strangers. I don't know their background. I don't know their past. I don't know why they are the way they are today. And so because of that, I try to put myself in their shoes being like, okay, well, yeah, maybe they could have reacted in this way. But instead of nitpicking and putting myself in sin, what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer them to God and be like, God, I don't know what they need, but you do. So instead of being like, oh my gosh, well, they should have done this or that. You really don't know what that person needs. For all you know, the kid who's acting out and the mom who can't pay attention to them, the mom's dad might have just died, or she might be going through postpartum depression or there might be something going on behind the scenes you're not aware of. So it's way better to just offer them to God and be like, God, 
I do not know what this person needs, but you do please help them. And that way I feel like I'm helping instead of causing more problems for that person. Um, this happens a lot though, when I see like young girls who go to mass in booty shorts and crop tops and things. And I'm like, Oh, like, why would you wear that to mass? But then I'm like, God, they might be going through something. And I am just glad that they are here today, but please like, next time give them a little conviction about what they wear to mass you know and sometimes you can you can talk to people like that but it's very rare that people will actually take it in a good way because a lot of people that dress like that are actually very insecure um and so adding insecurity onto it sometimes just doesn't help so praying honestly for them is the best option i feel you she judges me all the time i do Especially when you had a mullet when you were a teenager. <laughs> oh, too funny. Um, the next one, I took catechism classes and had my first communion in 2006, but was never confirmed. What do I do? So basically, you would just have to go back to RCIA and just finish it out. Um, you can literally just talk and just call your parish and be like, hey, you know, explain it to them. Be like, hey, I did First Holy Communion and all this stuff, but I was never confirmed. Can I finish? And um, they'll set you up with a class and a time, or they'll set you up with a priest. He'll figure out how much you know, and you'll have to take like some tests and things like this to see how much you understand. And then you'll get confirmed. Um, it's really not as difficult as a lot of people think. You might have to wait though until like Easter or something. That's when the bishop will usually come in, unless your bishop is, you know, actually in your diocese often. Um, but just work it out with your local parish. They'll be more than helpful, you know, to get you through all of that. Good. Is it okay to burn incense sticks and incense cones for the smell only, or is it bad? Well, I mean, bad for your lungs. No, I'm just kidding. Here's the thing, though. I think because certain things are attached to, like, a lot of incense is attached to, like, Wicca and spiritual things. And so... Because of that, they're the people who make them. I don't know if you guys are fans of like Father Ripperger or not, but he's he's talked about items that can get, you know, um, uh, cursed and, and demons are on things because of the way that the person made it. People who make incense sticks and cones usually are involved in Wicca some way, one or another, or Reiki, um, which are not good. They're condemned by the church. So... I always suggest uh, getting incense from your local parish because usually they sell it or you can get it from your Orthodox church, local Orthodox church. They usually sell little packets of incense. And then you get these little like charcoal things. And I actually have some right here. Are we recording this on video? Is that what we're doing? So I, I can show it to the people who are listening on video. And so basically these are little char charcoal things. And then you put the incense, you light them, you put the incense on here. And I have a bunch of different little incenses here. And then you just put like a couple little tablets on there. And um, and then it causes it creates incense and it's way better for you. And you can get this blessed, um, the incense blessed. And I would also suggest when you're done with the incense, if it is blessed, you should bury it. Don't throw it out because we don't throw out blessed items. We um we bury them and we return them to the ground. So um Anyways, I wouldn't suggest incense sticks or cones because of some things that could be attached to them. Um, but you can definitely ask your local parish for some incense and they'll be more than happy to give you some. As usual, I disagree. Of course. We have the secular um, view and then we have the Catholic view. So, um, but I have a couple notes. Oh, okay. First off, this is not on video for those of you listening. Oh, really? <laughs> No. no, this Q and A is not on is not on video. So this is like I'm seeing you right now. You showed me, so you can put uh, some notes out there that uh, you know where this is at if people want to buy it. Sorry, babes. My, My personal opinion on this is is you know there are scents in the church. I've been to churches that have had incense sticks myself, but um, you know I well, think this it is depends like on a, where you get it. This is a, a kind of a loaded question in a way because you know, people have been creating their own potpourris and, and incense for a long time. Like this mm -hmm. isn't necessarily spawned from witches. This is, you know, people no, grow but things it's associated in their garden with that, they, that they dry out and they use to, you know, uh, lighten their house or set in a bowl or whatever. Um, 
but yeah, I think uh, I think it's it's it really making the leap to it's witchcraft if you buy. Well, no, I'm not saying from, it is, but from, I'm saying it's associated with. Witches I don't nowadays. think you're gonna go to hell if you go to Hot Topic and you buy incense. Okay. Ew. Why would you go to Hot Topic for incense? Ew, that's bad quality. You well, otherwise you have that. to go to the local witch store. Ew. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, don't don't get it from them. They probably cursed it. Okay. Next question. What do you think of <laughs> Timothy Gordon? I think he's very knowledgeable about the faith. Oof. Um I I used to like Tim Gordon a bit. Um, I listen to him every now and then a little, and then I do believe he is knowledgeable about not not mm, knowledgeable. There we go, about the faith um in certain aspects, but I also think he abuses that a lot as well. Um, there have been some things that he said that are extremely sexist and I'm not talking about like normal, um, normal, like what secular people today would consider sexist, like a woman, you know, being a stay at home mom or whatever, but like actually sexist. I tried reading his wife's book, um, ask your husband where literally you have to ask your husband before you do anything anything and I couldn't even get through the first two chapters and um there was basically this tweet that he put out about how I don't know if it was him or his wife but basically how you always have to be available to your husband sexually no matter what um and there was just like a lot of sketchy things and so I don't listen to Tim Gordon anymore I don't think he's a bad man but I don't agree with a lot of his views on marriage because his daughters are not allowed to go to college unless um, unless it benefits them as housewives somehow. And I don't think that's fair. I do believe that college can be a scam. It can be, but if you want, if like his daughters eventually want to go into engineering or something, like they're not going to be allowed to. So I don't think that's fair personally as, I mean, do I love college? No, but I like having the choice, you know, being able to go. Um, so yeah, I just, mm, no, not a fan. Good. Who's your favorite Pope? Pope John Paul II. I know that that's kind of like cliche, but he died when I was three and I was very, very sad about it when he died. And uh, I've liked him ever since. Do you have to be married to someone to move in with them? Yes. Yes, you do. Because in the Catholic church, it's actually mortal sin to move in, to co-habituate, co whatever, to basically live in the same house together before marriage. And in fact, if you want to get married in the Catholic church, you actually have to live apart for about six months um, during pre-Cana. You cannot live together if you want to get married in the Catholic church. Is taking antidepressants bad for our souls? Mm. Well, I mean, it depends on how far deep, how deep you want to get into this, because Father Ripperger has talked about how antidepressants can be cursed. Um, there's like this whole thing about it that it, it okay. It's, it's, it depends on if you want to get super into like the whole exorcism thing, but basically Father Ripperger has stated that there are a lot of antidepressants out there that are cursed to keep people depressed. I never took antidepressants because even though I get seasonal depression, it's not I don't take antidepressants because it's all based off of the idea that you don't have enough serotonin in your brain. Um, it's led to a lot of health problems. And I mean, you might have a different opinion on this, but as far as I know, they're, they're terrible for your health physically. And most of the time I'm not discounting like people who have depression, but I do believe a lot of the time you can make your depression better by throwing your phone out a window, turning off the news eating organically and healthy and exercising at least once a day. It doesn't have to be a lot, like going for a walk, you know? Um, I have seen decreases in a lot of friends who have had uh, depression. I've seen a decrease in their depression once they've implemented those things. I'm not saying that depression isn't real. It definitely is. And you should get therapy for it if needed, for, you know, physic, uh, Catholic therapist if possible. But I don't always think that antidepressants are the answer. Um, I think a lot of times people are quick to just give people drugs and not actually try and fix them naturally first. Um, 
because honestly, the big pharma and those, those, you know, those drug places, they make money off of you being sick. So I don't know. Do you have an idea on that, Todd? Because you're more no in comment. that than I am. I have stock in the pharmaceutical companies, so I hmm. shouldn't say anything. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <laughs> it's okay. So take pharmaceuticals, but uh, their stock pays off well. So hey, if you, okay. anyone's looking for any stock advice, I'll give you my email at the close of the show. There you go. <laughs> um, tips for going to a first Latin mass. Oh, so I do have a video about this on my YouTube channel. Um, but I will say that the first time you go, I wouldn't, I always tell people like to get a missal, which is like this little red book. You can get it off Amazon. It's called a Latin mass red book missal. Um, and it has the, uh, the Latin to English translation with pictures. So you can follow along in the mass. I personally don't believe you need this. The first few times you go to the Latin mass, I suggest sitting, you know, up close where you can see, maybe not the front row, because you definitely still want to be able to participate in the mass. And it's hard to do that when you can't see what other people are doing. So if you're not familiar with when you stand, when you kneel, all that stuff, I definitely suggest you sit in between some people so you know when to do all of that. But I highly suggest you just go and you just take it in your first time. Um, you really don't have to prepare all that much. Just pay attention to what other people are doing around you. And if you find you love it because of the reverence and the beauty, then definitely go get the red book and uh, start studying it. Something that I found very helpful for people who are new to the Latin mass is they will look up the Latin mass online. Like they'll, they'll be churches that have it online and then they follow along in their missal. So when they go on Sunday, they're more familiar with it. Um, and also keep in mind, there's like a few different types of Latin mass. There's the low mass, which is very quiet there. You don't respond at all. It's very reflective and meditative. Um, and you won't really hear the priest at all, except for a few times, um, which I don't necessarily suggest for first time goers because you usually get lost. But I think it's beautiful if you want to try it. Then there's high mass, which is usually a... Um, there's usually incense and they're singing and then there's solemn high mass, which is like almost two hours long and they have like processions and Gregorian chant and it's beautiful. Um, so, yeah, you know, just see what your church offers. What are your thoughts on rap music? Okay, so <laughs> I don't like rap, but I do Enoch. He's pretty fun. E-K-N-O-C-K. -K. Uh, he's a Catholic rapper and I actually kind of like his music quite a bit. But when it comes to just rap in general, I'm not a fan. Like I already talk fast enough as is. I don't, I don't need somebody fast talk singing. Like that's not, no, no thanks. Who's your favorite saint? Um, I always go between like a couple, but I really like Saint Drago because he's the patron saint of ugly people and coffee. He's fun. He's a fun one. It's funny. <laughs> Let's see what we have. Any advice for people too scared or anxious to approach women? This is going to sound counterproductive, but get a guys group. This is going to sound really weird, but def get a Catholic men's group. Go and start talking to people and getting comfortable. And also girls love confidence. They love it when you're confident in yourself and things. So don't approach them thinking they're going to be scary and weird and stuff like that don't approach them with the intention of wanting to ask one of them out. In, like instead, just approach them with the intention of friendship and getting to know them and just kind of like listen. Honestly, listening is probably one of the best ways to approach women. You approach, if it's a group of women um, at a young adult group or something, just introduce yourself. Be like, hi, my name is this. What are we talking about? Or hi, my name's this. Like, what's your name? just really basic stuff. Like women are not as complicated as a lot of guys think. If you're nervous about it, I suggest going to a guys group, talking it out with them. You know, it sounds weird, but practicing, <laughs> it helps. Um, you know, because at the end of the day, confidence is really key and building up confidence can take a while, but it's totally worth it. So. I agree. With yeah. most of that, some of that. Yeah, some, um, some of that. <laughs> did you ever okay. contemplate becoming a nun? Um, not a nun, maybe a sister. I did for like a month 
And then I went and stayed with the Dominican sisters and I was like, nope, that ain't for me. <laughs> Are there any US cities that you would like to visit? Mm, um, I mean, all of them. I don't really have a specific one on my list per se. Um, I don't really like cities because they're very noisy and populated and smelly and gross. They're, I don't know, I'm not a huge fan of cities, but states in general I would like to go to would be basically any state with mountains. I really like Washington state, I like Colorado, um, those types of places. And I think that's all the questions we have for today. Awesome, well, thank you so much guys for sending your questions in. Those were really cool. Let's do this again sometime. Yes, absolutely. Thank you so much, Todd, for joining me. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of A Catholic's Perspective. And I'll talk to you guys in the next episode. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to A Catholic's Perspective with me, The Religious Hippie. Make sure to visit my official website at thereligioushippie.com. And while you're there, be sure to sign up for my newsletter to keep up to date with my latest news and offerings. You can also find me on virtually any social media site as The Religious Hippie. Thanks for listening. A quest is a search for something. And every week, the Quest podcast will show you how we know what we know through interviews with people that have incredible stories of dedication and perseverance. I'm your host, Todd Fisher. Join me in this thought-provoking and inspiring podcast of discovery. Find us anywhere you listen to podcasts. Thank you for listening to this podcast. Please be sure to rate and review this episode. This podcast is produced by Todd Fisher and Anthony Smith and is distributed by Metacortex Publishing. This podcast is copyright. Any previously trademarked or copyright content is used by permission. Information and opinions stated in this podcast should not be construed as medical advice. Please be sure and visit the official website for Metacortex Publishing at metacortexpublishing.com or find us on social media for other unique content.